Really pleased how we completed our first two games on the road. You know, I thought our team was focused. Uh, we, they accepted the challenge, stepped out, and competed at a high level. Uh, more complete in the uh, A&M game than the Kentucky game, but I thought that um, the Kentucky game was really good for us because we figured out a way to win. Um, despite missing some shots. Um, I think there's still a tremendous amount of growth for our team, and obviously we're really excited about the matchup on Thursday. Coach, you, uh, you've got your team inside the top 25. Mm. Just some more thoughts on uh, that. Well, um, like I said, I thought it was great for our program. It's great for the university. Um, uh, that's why our players came here when I, you know, you, you guys always ask, like, what do I sell? That's what I sell. You can come here and <clears throat> turn the program around and be a part of something, you know, from the ground up and, and etch your name in it. And um, so it was pretty cool for that to happen uh, for our group. Now, um, I've always felt like we were one of the top teams in the country. So, you know, we just like to – cool that other people see it, but nevertheless, we, we've always felt that way, so we're just going to continue to, you know, chop wood and carry water. You've got another opportunity on Thursday, mm -hmm. obviously, yeah. to make a lot of noise mm -hmm. in terms of that. Uh, just your thoughts yeah. on South Carolina? Well, we have a lot of opportunities ahead. <laughs> I think uh, we have South Carolina, Georgia, Missouri, who beat South Carolina, and LSU. So uh, no easy games for us. Um, but as far as the South Carolina game, um, it's just an incredible opportunity for our program uh, to be on the national stage, ESPN. You know, that uh, easily they could have dropped the game um, because obviously they wanted to see the UConn and South Carolina match up. But, you know, I'm appreciative that we get to put the University of Mississippi on, on a national stage other than maybe football, you know, so or men's basketball. So, you know, we, we're, we're going to be ready. We're going to be excited. Uh, we're not uh, – we're pretty even keeled about it. South Carolina is a team that has championship uh, pedigree and experience. Um, and uh, so for us, we're going to go in there and play our style of basketball and, and see what happens. Fast. Yeah. Sunday night, I mean, y'all were playing in Kentucky thinking you were going to have a week off to prepare mm -hmm. for another good Georgia team. Yeah. But just kind of your emotions of handling kind of shifting <clears throat> years that quickly Sunday night. Well, I kind of knew uh, maybe, you know, before everyone else did, Don and I have a relationship. So, I mean, and obviously we had to talk about it, about the potential and us trying to change things around. I think people don't realize how much goes into the preparation as far as like, you have to get a plane, you have to make sure the kids can miss school and, and et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, but I told the team after uh, the game, cause I wanted us to be focused on Kentucky. Um, obviously they were excited. Uh, I'm excited. It, it's not like we weren't gonna play this game. We had COVID and we couldn't. And so um, it seems like the SEC is doing their part to get all of our games rescheduled. So we look forward to South Carolina twice and Arkansas. Now you've done some like reflecting up there previous mm -hmm. times about you know, how far this program has yeah. come in recent years, just with this being a ranked team, a ranked matchup yeah. on ESPN. Yeah. Can you imagine like four years ago being in that sort of situation? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's why I came to Ole Miss, you know, um, I've always said that, you know, I, I would tell, I would tell these guys, like, be patient. I'm telling you, we're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna always be, you know, the bottom feeder. So, um, I, I do know when I interviewed with the AP yesterday, it was, it was, every time I hear something, that's when I kind of be like, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like he said, you know, you guys hadn't been ranked in 15 years, and that's when it hit me. Like, it didn't hit me that we were getting ranked. We hadn't been ranked in 15 years. This is only my fourth season, so obviously there were coaches that tried uh, to bring this program back and uh, fell short. And so this morning I asked my players where they were 15 years ago uh, or how old they were, and the lowest we got was four. <laughs> 
my daughter was my daughter's four years old. So they were fifteen years ago, they were four years old. <laughs> what were you doing fifteen years ago? Uh fifteen years ago, um I was uh making eight hundred and fifty dollars a month, uh working at uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff, getting my masters, um, starting my career. That's where I was when Ole Miss was ranked. <laughs> say to your players in, in this group where we were talking to a couple of them and yeah y'all are rain but they're like that's not like, yeah. they know that's not the mountaintop and yeah the, for them to kind of already mentally be handling that what does that say to this team uh you know we just we we made a decision early in the year uh to not let any type of outside opinions influence us uh, and that was preseason rankings. That's any awards. You know, our ultimate goal is to go to the NCAA tournament. Uh, obviously, honest, honestly, being ranked was not something that as a coaching staff we even discussed. I don't know how we missed that. But uh, we've been so focused on where we're trying to go, and that is NCAA tournament. So we didn't even discuss um, – being ranked it had it never even came across our minds until we beat South Florida and everybody thought we would then be ranked you know um, and then we was like oh okay yeah that kind of makes sense so for our team we've been managing that uh, for the most part and they've been great you know I expected them to be a little bit more excited um, but um, they were pretty casual with it. <laughs> they were pretty casual with it. You know, I, I think our staff was more excited. And, and you know why? That's because it's the behind the scenes that goes into it. You know, for Kira, she's probably used to being right. You know, I know Maddie was excited because everything's coming into fruition. You know, like I came here for this, you know, but uh, for the most part, our girls were pretty normal. It's it's my support staff I have to keep in. <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's them. That's the work we've been putting in because we've been here from the beginning, you know. So I know for Mimi and I know for Ianla, I know it, it was really special for them and the whole program. But, um, you know, we're unfazed by it. We're focused on the next game. To that point, what did it mean to our mentee to kind of see it come yeah. for her? I called her and I said, you know, as an alum, you know, what does this mean? And she, and, and she said, Coach, it means the world. You know, I, I remember when I first came and I would start doing stuff around the office and, you know, putting up certain things, remembering history or adding something. She would always say, you know, Coach, as a, an alum, this makes me proud, you know. And so I felt like I've always been in, in – um, in touch with the ones before that has paved the way. And then you have Van Chancellor uh, coming in and, and doing a brief cameo, you know? So it, it, it's, it's really cool for those people. It's really cool um, for my staff. They work so hard. And I'm not just talking about my coaches. I'm talking about my ops, my director of player development, video. I'm talking about my complete staff, the athletic trainer, strength coach. You know, this is the dream I sold. This is why they're here. So for it to um, uh, be a reality, I feel um, a great sense of pride for that. When you look at the South Carolina program, mm -hmm. they're one of the top tier yeah. in the country. Are they sort of the, the standard to aspire to? And what is it that they do so well that – programs want to mimic other than obviously you know, winning. Yeah, I mean, I think what I appreciate, I, 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 think, I think if you're a real basketball head, uh, you want to aspire to be the Yukons, the Stanfords. You know, the, those teams dominated. Uh, you know, South Carolina is new to the dominance. Uh, so I don't know that we want to aspire to be South Carolina. I just know I have a tremendous amount of respect for Dawn and um, the program and what she's done. And I do look at it and try to model a lot of the things that we do um, by getting her fan base involved and being able to sign multiple high-level players. Um, you know, I do look at that and I do study that. I think... Um, she has opened doors for coaches like myself and others, so there's a respect level there. Um, but I respect her enough to give her my best fight. Um, so we're going down there. 
uh, with the intent to be competitive and win a basketball game. Who is that? Mimi. Uh, Mimi is just, uh, <laughs> you know, I call her the oldest player in women's basketball. <laughs> it's our little joke. Uh, but we have a couple of old heads. Uh, Mimi, Mimi deserves this just as much as anybody else. You know, just as much as my strength coach, just as much as uh, Coach Chris, Coach Mann, who's been there from the beginning. You know, you talk about people that have been there here for the beginning. Um, I think that's why so many people resonate with what we're doing. And so Mimi, uh, I'm very happy for her. This is how I would want her to go out. Again, I made true to my promise to her as well. I said, before you leave, you're going to go to the NCAA tournament. I remember that, and I and then I remember looking at Maddie and said, and "You before you leave, Sweet 16." And I like went through the room and said, "This is what you're gonna do." Um, so for her to be able to experience this, I think it's great, and I think that's why so many people are involved and engaged with what we're doing. You know, you all were in here when we were 0 and 16, and you you all remember what I said, and so. Uh, it, and, and I've been pretty open about it. And I think that's why so many people are excited for where we are right now and today. We'll go to Zoom. Howard, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Hey. Howard Mandel here. Hey, Howard. Good to chat with you. Good. Um, I, I got a few if you'll indulge me. Sure. Um, I, the, the first one is just kind of a piggyback off of what you were talking about, not necessarily expecting to be ranked when the season began, and, I, you know, there are some goals in sight that maybe weren't there at the start of the year. You mm -hmm. guys might host, might be a top four no. seed. I just wonder if they've changed in your mind, if this team has so far exceeded where you necessarily expected they could get to uh, when the season began. Well, if, if someone were to ask me if I thought we would be 17-2 and two right now, undefeated on the road, I'd say no. I wouldn't. That's not something that I thought. Um, us going to the NCAA tournament, I was bold enough to say that before the season even started. Like, it's NCAA tournament or bus. Um, but I don't want to limit our team. So you're correct, Howard. Like, now I'm thinking, like, dang, I don't want to. At first, we was telling our team, we just need to be in the top half. You know, we need to be in the top half. But if we have a chance, now we're tied for second place. If we have a chance to be in the top four and host, why not? For this community, to get everybody engaged. Um, so we try to temper it, but we let them know that there is a possibility so that they don't shortchange themselves. And in terms of that growth, specifically, you know, you were a top 50 defensive team in the country yeah. last year by just about any mm -hmm. metric. You're somewhere top 10, top 20 yeah. this year. And there's a stat that I'd like to isolate on, steal percentage. Mm -hmm. You had four players north of 2% last year. You have 11 north of 2% <laughs> this year. And I'm just wondering, what has allowed this defense to reach that next level? I know there's some yeah. differences in personnel, mm -hmm. but I'm just curious, just more generally, it seems like across the board we're seeing that growth. Well, it's, it's the maturity, it's the maturation of our team. Uh, we... We took the defensive um, philosophy as such from Florida State men's basketball, all right, and Lennon Hamilton. And uh, so last year was just year one of us installing it. So this is just year two, you know. Um, and I think we'll probably have to keep it in two-year spans because of the portal and how we're going to recruit, um, you know. But imagine how dangerous it would be if we had kids for four years, <laughs> you know. Uh, but this is the second year, and so they're comfortable. They understand what we're trying to do. I feel like our new pieces have been incredible as far as uh, buying in to our system and our philosophy, and 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 really and really, Howard, that's what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. And Lashonda specifically spoke about yeah. coming to you because this was a place you could play defense. Yeah. Is yeah. she in, in that way? Is she kind of the missing piece? For the what you're, for what you were looking to install, you know, yeah. uh, Hamilton system. Yeah, you know, I could tell you what Monk brings. Monk, Monk brings defense. Monk brings maturity, but uh, most of all, Monk brings a toughness to our team that we lacked. Uh, we had it with Kira with the post, 
but not with the guards. Like Monk makes everybody tough. She makes Kira uh, have a, a, a comfort out there. I sleep well at night because I know when we go to play, she's ready to compete. She has brought a toughness out of Mimi and anybody she comes into contact with. She's just so gritty and uh, she's a defender and, and she can put the ball in the basket too. As you can see, she's averaging about 13 points in SEC play. So she has definitely just brought that, you know, maturity that I think our group needs right now. And then my last one is just about Shakira. And mm -hmm. in terms of her offense this year, mm -hmm. what we're seeing, if you look at her shot charts, is significantly more finishing at the rim yeah. even than last year. And mm -hmm. sort of two parts to that. One is how, you know, how do you account for it? What has been responsible for that yeah. growth? And how significant is that going to be in terms of her aspirations to go play at the next level? Yeah, you know, um, I just think Shakira is now very comfortable with the SEC. Thought last year was an adjustment. Um, if we're being honest, she struggled with the physicality at times. Uh, whereas now she just completely embraces it. Uh, Shakira can score, you know, she has the footwork of a Hakeem Olajuwon. You know, she, she it's credit to her, her, her dad with her growing up, just the training she got. That's not something you pick up in college. Like, she already had that. And so, uh, but I do think Coach Shea has done a great job of developing her. And, and I do think that as a staff, we do a good job of uh, her usage and putting her in spots to be successful. And I think that's what coaching is. You know, I can't put the ball in the basket, but I can put you in a position to be able to use your talents. And so what you're seeing is an all-around player and her maturation with her game. You know, Kira knows that everyone understands that she can score, but I told her the missing piece was, can you win? Uh, because in the pros, they want winners. They want impact players. If they wanted scores, then the leading scorer every year would go number one. We all know that that doesn't happen. How can you impact the game? And I think, uh, you know, night in and night out, she's been showing how she can impact the game in various ways. Appreciate your time. Coach. Thank, Thank you. you very much.